just from a Limerick point of view, um, the fact Kira Neville, you know, yeah. like yourself, she's a, she's a sprinter, yeah. um, and you know, you have the same coach, you, you're members of the same club, Emerald. Um, what's is that, what's that been like? That support, as well, it, camaraderie. It, it, yeah, yeah. We actually we did um, Vienna and Ostrava together, so that was actually lovely. Just um, because obviously we we train together, um, it's brilliant to have like each other to push each other on and yet not be in direct competition with each other. I mean, isn't that the dream? Um, because she's a hundred meter flat and obviously I'm a hundred meter hurdles. There's sli slight crossover, but um, also we know we're not competing with each other. So that's great. And Noelle, I mean, like, I don't know where we'd be without her. <laughs> she's, she's fantastic and deserves all the credit in the world and more because it's just so selfless what she's doing. And, and she's an amazing person and she's just a high performance operator in she's created that that environment for us to thrive and and it's no coincidence that we're both thriving under her if that makes sense um so yeah just abundance of appreciation for her <laughs> yeah you mentioned sarah you're, you're in a qualification spot at the moment for the olympics um how many more competitive races will you have in the outdoor season um and you know just what's your itinerary then i suppose for the next yeah. couple of months um I, all going perfectly to plan. I think there's actually six or seven, um, but I'm sure some will be cut. I'm sure some will, so you just have to constantly adapt to that. <laughs> um, and, and I actually think this season, the most adaptable and informatic it will be rewarded because you can't get too caught up about too much because there's so much out of our, out of our control. Um, we're, we're hoping to open up maybe the, the 22nd of May, 21st, 22nd of May um, in Spain. And then there's a race in second in Slovakia, then there's one in uh, Geneva, maybe one in, in in Prague. Again, it's like some of the races you won't find out. I found out just before a World Indoor Tour in Madrid on the Friday and the race I flew out on the Monday. So you're for the big races, you don't know because they, they only have eight, 16 lanes. So they're trying to get, say if there's heats and in some races, they only have eight lanes. So they're trying to get the best eight athletes they can find in the world. So particularly for the good races, you just have to be, be prepared and ready to go when your opportunity comes because you don't know exactly when it when which exact date it's going to be or, or anything like that um so but like there's key ones that obviously nationals is the end of of june um and european team championships again if these thing competitions go ahead and, and we so we kind of don't know 100 percent yet some are confirmed but you know, you just have to constantly kind of have a plan A, B, C, D, E, <laughs> maybe an F, and just and just run with it. Um, I definitely think my bottom, so your world rankings based on your top five races, uh, and I definitely am targeting my fifth race. Is I hope that that can be one one that I can get rid of, or improve, as they say, um, and hopefully that will, will push me on up a bit. And is it time improves your position rather than your position within a particular race? Both. Both. both so if you run a particular time you get a uh points and then if it's in an a b or c competition they're all done on on, on different points so if you win an a i actually think i had it out here this morning because <laughs> you have to be so tactical then as to what competitions you're you're attending and um, if you win an a it's something like a bonus 140 points if you win a b i think it's a bonus 100 points if you win a c it's 106 it's an extra 60 points so that goes on to your score um for your actual um what time you've run say and i know it's really complicated but i think as athletes we just have to buy into it because this is the circuit this is the setup now and you know we just have to roll with it and also it probably makes it really exciting for people watching on even if it is kind of stressful for us <laughs> and hopefully the most informed athletes will attend the games as opposed to someone who's maybe achieved achieved a standard you know three years prior to it or something like that sure um what would it mean to you to make the Olympics? I mean, everything, I suppose. Absolutely everything. Yeah. Like I've dreamt of it since I was probably seven years old since, you know, so um, I don't even know, do I allow myself to, to even process that? Because I just know it's possible. And I also know that um, I have improvements to make <laughs> on the track and, and and what session I'm in for daily or whatever is has to be done has to be done um, but yeah it would, it would mean everything. I suppose Sarah the, the, there's the the announcement made a couple of weeks ago that there won't be 
um, spectator overseas spectators allowed. Um, yeah. And I appreciate you have to qualify first, but um, yeah. What, what's your what's your take on that? It'll just be. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think I saw it coming. I think most people saw it coming, didn't they? That um, they it was just didn't know how that was going to be, you know how it would be staged in in any other way but I still think it's quite promising that they have said that no overseas spectators so I do know that well definitely when we were in Taiwan um, there were massive fans of track and field 70,000 people at a world university games um, and and if they allow Japanese spectators to attend obviously it's hugely populated but they have such technology in Japan and I, I'm, I'm convinced that it would, I don't 100% believe that we'll be in an empty, an empty stadium at the Olympics yet. Yeah. Um, you know, with the rapid antigen test, there's so much going on. And you know what? I don't even, I don't even know. Um, but of course, like your family and your friends are such huge factors into your performance, and they've done so much. Like, of course, on you, like you're the only one who runs down the track and has gets the hurdle. But there's so many people go into behind the scenes, and you'd love for them to be able to share that moment if if you did make it. Um, but I'm sure they'll make up for it, you know, if we come home. <laughs> yeah. Just Sarah, in changing from 60 indoors to 100 outdoors, yeah. um, what's that change like for Yeah, you so <laughs> it's five hurdles indoors and, it, and it's 10 outdoors, but they're in the exact same positions. You know, you still have 13 metres into the first and eight and a half metres in between um, every hurdle. So it's just about being stronger. You know, you have to be able to finish the race. I think make, looking forward to it. Um, but yeah, they're 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 different events, hundred um, percent. I rang Noel, my very first sixty meters this year. I rang my first. I rang Noel. I was like, "Geez, it was over so quick." And she was like, "Yes, obviously, Sarah." Um, but I think that was just the, the shock to the system. I was like, "Geez, I can't believe here that you know that was that was all. That's it. Like that's all I could do." Um, but the yeah, I think I love an outdoors. The outdoors is the Olympic event. I've always preferred hundred hurdles. Um, and I'm just working on my strength, the lactic sessions at the moment that Noelle's given me and the top worker to make me finish off the end of the race, um, which hopefully will, will work. Um, so yeah, just doing everything we can to, to marry both together, the speed and the strength. Just, just finally, I mean, you must be, you must approach these coming months in confident mood on the back <laughs> of the terrific indoor season you've had to date so and you must be really looking forward to getting yeah. back, back out of doors yeah 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 no I mean like it's a it's it's the dream to be able to say that you're in the shape of your life on an Olympic year um but ultimately nothing has been achieved yet so I think from that perspective um just so far from being to say I'm entirely confident <laughs> I think that would just lead to complacency because there's so much you have, I have to do between now and then, you know, and, and and ultimately as well, if you do make the games, I don't just want to be going out there to just tick the box and make up the numbers. Um, you want to be competitive and, and and make a semi-final and push to try and see if you can make a final, you know, all those things. And um, yeah, I don't, I don't think, I don't know. I just, I think confidence would lead to complacency. I mean, obviously there's the inner confidence and the inner belief and stuff, but um I'm happy with where I am and, and I think I know what I need to do between now and, and hopefully the end of June. You're a qualified physiotherapist. Yes. How you, how you, you've parked that now obviously in concert um, full-time in the athletics. It just because um for the so since indoors because I couldn't keep traveling obviously and uh, because when you come back you have to do your quarantine and, and get your tests and stuff um you're still allowed to train but obviously I couldn't be meeting with clients um and then likewise the rate was quite high in the community and I was afraid I was going to get it so and not be able to go to the next competition so you know, kind of the my decision my I would have normally kind of been like oh I don't know and it was kind of forced <laughs> in some ways so um I think I, it's three months to make a dream come true and and if I can recover that little bit better or you know just anything that will help my next training session and if that's time off my feet and more focus into just getting to bed at half nine or getting to sleep in a couple of mornings a week <laughs> that all helps you know in in how you adapt to a training session and 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 ultimately I love physio and I'm still getting messages from clients who want updated programs and everything so I'm still working away on my phone but um with regards to the clinic no I haven't been in it 
Yes. Sarah, thanks a million for talking to me. Very Thank best of luck so with, much, the, with the you. next couple of months and fingers crossed for, for Tokyo. <laughs> everybody, everybody will be rooting for you, I'm sure. Thank you so, so much. You're so good. Thanks, Colin.